Let us proceed. The time is 12.31, October 5th, 2030. Subject is Takahashi employee B. Robertson, who was about to become the first live human to undergo procedure MT-010. How are you feeling, Mr. Robertson? I'm a little numb, but otherwise okay. My, my heart's racing, though. <laughs> that is to be expected by the medication you're on. There should be no pain from those probes on your head anymore, just a slight discomfort. The restraints are just there to make sure you don't move them during the procedure. Okay. You may black out shortly after it begins, but this is perfectly normal. Now, let us proceed. Lowering the module, beginning phase one. Just breathe slowly and deeply, Mr. Robertson. Try to stay calm. And don't worry, remember, I am right next door. I will be watching the whole time. <laughs> oh, this is ominous. Procedure complete. Beginning cognitive assessment. Can you hear me? Can you say your name for me? What's your name? Robertson. Uh, 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 why, do, why do I sound like this? Just relax, Mr. Robertson. That's perfectly normal. It'll take you a while to build your speech and fine motor skills. Can you count back from ten slowly for me, Mr. Robertson? Uh, ten, nine, eight... Uh, seven... Doctor, what's going on? Did it work? Uh, uh, wait, who, who, who is that? What? Wh who's there? What's going on? Why, why am I still here? What's uh, going on? Uh, that's me! Who is that? This is, this is not what we agreed on! Mr. Robertson, I need you to understand this is how it works. You are a clone. The original... No, 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 this is yes, not what we agreed on. Tell me how it is. I need you to calm down. Ah, where am I? Ah, Europa, of course. There was some kind of explosion. Ah, I'm stuck. This is 826... Oh, screw it. This is Robertson. Is everyone okay? Can anyone hear me? Shit, I need to try and get out of here before my energy on Doe 2 runs out. Ah, it's a good thing that I'm lying on the ice and the gravity is so low here. Otherwise, I'd really be in trouble. Still, ah, this... Ain't the most easiest of things to do. Ah, oh, I feel like I've been hit by a truck. Could have been a lot worse, though. Ah, I remember being hit from behind, but my backpack and spacesuit seem to have ab absorbed most of the impact. Come on, Captain. Just a little further. Yes! <laughs> uh, oh, good grief. I don't think I've broken anything, but I am really badly bruised. So I'll need to take things slowly until I can find a medical kit or something. Yeah, better not leave that behind. What the hell happened here anyway? Did one of the tanks explode, or did a shuttle miss the landing pad and hit the station? Whatever it was, it looks like it was powerful enough to make the entire roof cave in and fall down around me. Just as well I was downstairs. Shit. I need to find out if everybody else is okay. This is 826 to any Soul Co-op personnel. Can anyone hear me? Does anyone need any help? Over. Shit. Steve! Hold on, buddy. I'm right here. Oh no, this doesn't look good. <sighs> Damn it. He's gone. Sorry, Steve, but I really need to relieve you of anything that can help me or any other survivors out here. Ah, that's better. I can already feel the painkillers and epinephrine kicking in. I'm hoping I won't need this, but better to be safe than sorry. Yeah, that ice is from the oxygen generator. It obviously got destroyed in the explosion, too. Well, that's not good. Oh, crap! It's Evans. <sighs> or was. 
And Matthews. Ah, oh, damn it to hell. He's dead too. That's both of them. This is not looking good. We've lost the forklift, but it looks like the cargo container's okay. And the contents too. Well, that's a start. I'll take one of these clan colas. If I manage to find anyone alive, they might need some hydration. If not, then I'll just drink it myself later. Because my mouth is as dry as all hell. Not surprising, really, given the combination of shock, stress, and pain. I still can't get over the amount of damage that's been caused. I'm still trying to figure out how on earth this all happened. It's Ellen Curtis. Ah, she's gone too. Her visor and spacesuit are all messed up. Well, at the very least, it was probably quick. Oh no, Sergey! Ah, bloody hell. He had a wife, and a kid, and another one on the way. He didn't deserve this. None of them did. Hang on a second. What the hell is that? Son of a bitch! That's the tail end of a Starlance guided missile! Was this place attacked? But why? This is just a civilian surface station. It's not even that important. Either way, I'm arming myself now. And if this place was really hit with a missile strike, there's a very good chance that bastard is still up there. I suppose there's only one way to make sure, though. Right, let's play Spot the Star that's brighter than the others and is moving. Seeing that, it does depend on how the sun is hitting it, of course. And because this is a moon, he should be within visual range of these binoculars. Heh, <laughs> that's providing he hasn't already jumped away. Aha, uh -huh. what do we have here? There you are, you bastard. I can't really tell what it is exactly, but it's definitely a large escort-style spacecraft. I'm seeing what looks like a glint of red, but can't be sure as it's quite dark. Well, according to the icon on my suit's HUD, I'm still recording this, so I can take a look at it later on. Anyway, my suit's energy is running low. I'd better use one of those power packs I picked up earlier which I don't seem to have. Holy crap, I'm still holding on to those five explosives I collected from downstairs. I must have put the wrong ones into the surface cargo container by accident. I'm just lucky I didn't get blown to smithereens. Yeah, there they are. That's exactly what I did. Bloody hell. My life is in enough danger as it is without me making things worse for myself. And right now, I need to try and live long enough to get rescued, preferably by the Soul Cooperative or one of their allies. There, that'll help. There's two more power kits on Evan's body, but I'll grab them later on. I need to try and make these last as long as possible. The only problem is that if the vessel that belongs to the visiting Soul Co-op Sector Admin comes into orbit, they'll likely be attacked long before they're able to land down here. But that's assuming that they've not been destroyed already. I was unconscious for a while earlier, and I might have missed the fireworks. Either way, right now I need to build myself a makeshift shelter or a temporary base under the ice until help arrives. The reason why is because Europa sits right inside Jupiter's radiation belt and I'll need several feet of ice and some thick walls in order to gain shelter from it, as well as a way to recharge my suit's energy and refill my oxygen bottles. I'm just making sure to remove enough of this debris first so I've got enough space to dig under the ice here next to the station. If I can use some of the station's existing walls and foundations, then that's going to save me a lot of work, because right now, I don't really have much time or spare components to build things with. But I'll worry about that later on, as right now, I need to get digging. Oh, 
Okay, this should be deep enough to give me the bare minimum level of protection I need. It's not great, but it'll have to do, as I really don't have the time to build anything deeper under the ice, at least not yet. The first thing I need to build is a battery. That will come with a small amount of power already. Not much, but enough to keep me alive for a little while and maybe power a very basic oxygen generator. There should be more than enough power cells in here for one, but I'm not too sure about the other components. I'll have to check the surface cargo container and grind down some of the blocks from the station, provided they're not too badly damaged. Otherwise, I'll just get a handful of steel plates and the rest will be scrap metal. Now, the question is, where would be the best place to build it? Probably over here, to be honest, but I will have to grind this down first. Yeah, that'll do. It gives me plenty of space to the right to build a bed and possibly even a storage area. What I am very much aware of is that I can't build a survival kit because there's no medical components. Nor are there enough computers to make even a basic assembler, so I'm going to have to be very careful about what I choose to build here. Another thing worth noting is the fact that all of those hydrogen and oxygen bottles in those cargo containers are empty. The only two that are filled are the ones that I came outside with, which means that it won't be long before I start to run low on oxygen too. Right, I need construction components and computers. Okay, let's see if I've got any of those left. Ah, there's none left in here. There's some in the other cargo container, but those are to be used as a last resort. I'll start grinding down everything out here that I don't need, starting with these. Yeah, I've noticed there's a lot of resources lying around. It's just a shame I can't do anything with them. There, hopefully that should be enough. Oh yeah, plenty of power. All I need to do now is create a bed so I can recharge my suit. And that should be easy enough. All I need to do is find an existing one and grind it down for the components I need. In fact, will it let me use this one now that we've got power? Oh well, it was worth a try. Obviously not on the same grid.
Okay, let's get this thing placed down and make a start on it. Damn it, I'm cutting it really close here. I'm almost out of power and I've used up my last power kit. Ha! Just in time! It's a little dark in here, but that's okay. I'll add lights later on. Right now, I just need to recharge my suit's power. Otherwise, I'll sodding freeze to death. I have to admit, it is kind of relaxing though. Anyway, there'll be plenty of time for me to chill out later on once I've been rescued. In the meantime, I need to find some way of providing power and replenishing my hydrogen and oxygen reserves. The only snag is that I don't really have enough components to build anything. Well, that's not entirely true. I do have enough components to build either a hydrogen engine or an O2H2 generator, but not both. Unless... Hmm, I have an idea. And this idea begins with building a rotor. I think about here should do. I don't want it too close to the door because these things do take up a lot of space. Now the rotor itself does use up some components, but not too much thankfully, and it's all stuff I can easily get from grinding down other things out there. Ah, computers are going to be a problem. There's very few of those left now. And even fewer blocks I can salvage them from. Well, I guess I'll just have to take them from here. What I need to do now is add a small rotor head. This will let me build small grid versions of the H2O2 generator and the hydrogen engine that I'll use as a backup power generator. They use up far fewer components, but in return they're a lot less powerful and efficient than their large grid counterparts. But that's not a problem, as I really just need them to survive for a few more days until help arrives. I just need some steel plates and some small steel tubes. There we are. Now I just need to make a start on the small grid itself. Now to place the hydrogen engine. I've got more than enough components for this. The boring part is just going to be the running back and forth and welding it up. I just realised now that that noise I heard earlier, the one that sounded like static along with that beeping warbling noise, that was probably the ship in orbit jamming our short-range comms. 
The long-range comms were already down thanks to Matthews running into our only working antenna with a freaking forklift truck, but it's just too much of a coincidence that this place was attacked shortly after that sound came through my headset. I doubt very much that Matthews was actually involved in what happened though. I think the crash was just an unfortunate coincidence because, I mean, let's face it, Matthews is, was, somewhat accident prone. Ah, uh, anyway, dwelling on it won't help. I need to find some more computers and construction components, which means I'll have to start grinding these merge blocks down. Excellent. A couple more trips back and forth should do it. Okay, the next step is to add an H2O2 generator. And I'll need to make sure I've got the conveyor ports aligned just right. I think that's okay. Yeah, it is. I was right the first time. And once again, I need construction components and computers. No surprises there. Still low on computers. I suppose I could get more from the upstairs console and connectors if needed, but I'd rather not. I'll take these steel tubes in the meantime, though. Ah, now, when I grinded those other blocks down earlier, I've got a feeling I dumped the components into the other cargo container. Yeah, there they are. I'll have to build a cargo container inside my shelter at some point, just to save me having to run back and forth all the damn time. I may as well take one of these oxygen bottles back with me too. I can refill it once I get the thing completed. There we go. All I need now is ice. And as it happens, I know exactly where I can find some, just lying around. Inventory full. Perfect. We've now got a working power generator and a way of producing more oxygen and hydrogen. Yep, fully recharged in 7 hours. Excellent. The best thing is, now that I've got both power and oxygen, I finally have the free time to improve this shelter. Ah, it's the old antenna. I hate to see what state that's in. Oh, hang on, that's actually not too bad. I guess it must just have toppled over after the attack, rather than being crushed like everything else. In fact, that gives me an idea. Could I rebuild this up there, and possibly even use it to call for help? I mean, seriously, the bad guys that were up there should be long gone by now. There's no reason for them to have hung around any longer than they needed. But saying that, it does still look like there's something moving up there. Oh, for crying out loud, that's them! It's definitely an ROS vessel, an Astorius if I'm not mistaken, with what looks like a shuttle docked under it. What the hell are they still doing here? Ah, oh, this is probably my fault. They've got excellent cameras and can probably see that someone's been moving stuff around down here. Damn it! Ah, oh, this is going to make rescue virtually impossible. Especially if I assume they've already taken out the sole co-op sector admin. You know what? To hell with it. I've got nothing left to lose anymore, so there's going to be a slight change of plan. 
Oh, I intend to rebuild and use that antenna to call for help, all right. And you know what? I hope those murdering bastards up there hear me, because I'm going to make damn well sure there's a surprise in store for them when they come down here. And like with before, this new project begins with yet another rotor and a small grid attached to it, the purpose of which will become clearer over time. I don't know if I'll ever make it out of this alive, but at least if anyone sees this recording, they will know what happened here. I actually fought against the Eastern Alliance on Mars back in a previous life, so infantry combat isn't something that's new to me. It has been a while though, and the last time I fired a gun, apart from the CDF firing range on Terra Nova, would have been against those robot sentinels and undead husks near that old CDF base and research facility. Against other human beings, however, it's been a while. But as any soldier will tell you, the training always stays with you. Unfortunately, so do all the old memories. Speaking of old memories, back after that explosion that knocked me out earlier, I had a nightmare, or rather, a flashback. I've been getting them ever since Proxima Centauri, and that accursed ship. Anyway, the flashback was from about 50 years ago, when I was on Earth, and they just transferred my memories, and pretty much everything that made me who I am, onto a younger cloned body of myself. At the time, it was quite a traumatic experience because I never really had it fully explained to me. I don't know why, but I just assumed that I'd go to sleep and wake up in a new body. I never thought that there would be two instances of myself alive at the very same time. One of them, the original, waking up to realise that they were still going to die within a few months. And the other, which was me, who would then go on to take part in a great adventure into the unknown. It does kind of make sense to me now that I've come to terms with it, but it still seems a bit morally grey, and indeed sad, to know that another version of me, which was essentially the real version of me, just withered away and died afterwards. Personally, I'd rather they just put me to sleep, but I suppose they probably needed me alive in case something went wrong. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent here, I need to stay focused. I need to get that door and the small grid with the sensor built as quickly as possible. My trips down memory lane and the soul searching, yeah, that can wait till later. Yep, that'll do. I'm running desperately low on computers now, so I'm having to salvage these merge blocks for them. But I do need to be careful that these other blocks that are attached to don't start collapsing around me. There, that's the small grid and sensor complete. I just need to make sure I've got the correct sensor settings. Ideally, I want it to trigger just as someone gets in front of the doorway, and not before. I've also added some Soul Co-op blue colour to the walls here, just to make it look a bit more homely. Anyway, I think I'll set this timer block to start after one second rather than triggering instantly, just so there's a slight delay. This is going to be important for the booby trap I plan to set up later on. Okay, let's see how this looks. Uh, it's still triggering a little too soon. I need to reduce the radius slightly. Yeah, that should do. Good. Now for the next phase. Placing the antenna up here should give it the best reception, although I'll need to reinforce that platform it's sitting on, just so that it's not balancing precariously on the edge. Because, as you can see, it takes up two blocks.
There, that's better. It's not perfect, but it'll suffice for now. Now here's the fun part, the long, slow, laborious task of building the damn thing. Yep, this may take a while. Almost done, just a few more components to go. Strange thing is, I haven't had any nightmares or flashbacks about building antennas. At least not yet. Still early days, I suppose. Those could be yet to come. <laughs> oh, now that's a scary thought. Ah, damn it. Well, at least I can finish this. Energy low. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'll finish building the antenna first, then I'll recharge my energy. Excellent. Once I've completed this and recharged my suit, I'll move on to the next stage of my plan. I just hope those buggers take the bait and come down here once I make the call for help. May as well refill my oxygen whilst I'm here too. This trap I'm about to set may or may not work. It really depends on how much those guys up there want me dead. If they've been given orders that there should be no survivors or witnesses, then this might actually work. Then again, I'm counting on them coming down here in person to make sure they finish me off, so they'll need a reason to save their missiles. Which means I'll need to mention I've got a shelter that's quite deep under the ice. It's a bit of a long shot, but hey, who knows, it might actually work. Just bump up the range of the antenna to maximum. Then get ready to deliver my performance and try to sound convincing. Mayday, mayday, mayday. This is Captain Robertson calling from the Soul Cooperative Surface Station Alpha 19 on Europa. We've just come under heavy missile attack. All the other crew are dead. Uh, I'm badly wounded and have taken shelter under the ice in front of the landing pad. Oh, my leg is pretty messed up. It's gotten worse and I'm stuck in a bed here. I've got video evidence of the ship that attacked. Please, send help quickly. Over. Ha, not quite Oscar winning material, but hopefully they fell for it. I'd better shut the antenna down to save power. If I'm lucky, they'll think it failed on its own. The next part of my plan involves these explosives. Yes, that's right. The same ones I had earlier that Evans left behind and which almost cost me my life. Thankfully, I was only hit by debris. If I was caught in the actual explosion from the missile attack, they would be pieces of Captain Robertson scattered all over the surface of Europa right now. Instead, I'm going to use them to build these two small warheads here, as they happen to be an important part of my, how should I say, surprise for any visiting ROS personnel. And trust me, it'll be a blast. Seriously though, if they do take the bait and come down here, I am going to be greatly outnumbered. Those Nestorius class escort vessels are usually crewed by around five or six people, sometimes more, so I need all the help I can get. To be honest, I don't stand much of a chance going up against five or six highly trained ROS security personnel, but at least I can try to take as many of the bastards with me before they eventually gun me down. I owe at least that much to all the innocent men and women they killed here today. Speaking of which, there's just one more thing I need to make this trap a little more convincing. Sorry, Matthews, but I kind of need to borrow your corpse. There we are. May I present Captain Robertson, who is currently lying in bed and nursing an injury. Especially now that he's been cleaned up, had his visor replaced and looks a little less, well, dead I suppose. Yeah I know his spacesuit's the wrong colour and he's a little on the short side but I'm hoping no one will notice that until it's too late. Plus we've also got that great big SOS sign directing them downstairs too so hopefully at least one or two of the Rossies will wander down that way. If not then things could get very interesting for me indeed.
All I need to do now is find a good vantage point where I can dig in and observe this landing pad from. I think about here should do it. All that's left now is to set up the warheads and wait. Right, I've added both warheads onto the same group so it's just a case of adding them onto the timer block now. The countdown is already set for one second, so as soon as anyone triggers that sensor inside, after one second, the doors will open, then after one more, boom. That's right, if any of you bastards up there are foolish enough to come down here, then I can guarantee there'll be more blood on the ice before this day is done. Well, now that everything is all set, I'd better get back to my hiding place and keep a sharp lookout. I'll only head back whenever I need to quickly refill my energy and oxygen supply. Otherwise, I'm out here for the long haul. All that being said, of course, I hope they've taken the bait. Ah, I see something. Yes, it worked! Here they come. Oh, better take cover. They're heading this way. I might be okay. It looks like they're more interested in the wrecked station. Excellent. It looks like he's coming down to land. <laughs> that was a bit of a hard landing, wasn't it? Oh, the door's opening. Here they come. Interesting. There's only four of them and the pilot that got out looks different to the others. It looks as though two of them are making their way towards my shelter. That's right. In you go. Oh dear, it sounds like they've shot Captain Robertson. Right, now that they're distracted, time to attack. Damn it, just die, you son of a bitch! Good grief, how many hits could that guy take? Yeah, those guys were definitely Rossies, but this fellow looks like Martian Special Forces. No name badge or unit insignia, though. I'll tell you what, I'll take his ammo and see if I can get into his shuttle. Haha, <laughs> success! Okay, now let's get the hell out of here. Oh dear, oh dear. Leaving your shuttle unlocked and with the thrusters still running. That was careless. Not that I'm complaining though, as this now gives me a means of escape. I'll need to watch out though, because it won't be long before the rest of the ROS guys of the Nestorius realise that this shuttle has been stolen. That's if they haven't already. They're probably wondering why it's taken off and being flown like this. I need to stick to the moon's surface as much as possible until they're below the horizon. Then I'll set a course for Io, the nearest moon to Jupiter, and the mining outpost where Marshal Gordon is stationed. Which is another reason why Ganymede was originally chosen as the site of my corporate service, although back then I never thought I'd end up on Europa. Shit, I've just realised that the beacon is still on, I'd better switch it off. This thing is already easy enough to spot without me broadcasting my presence to everyone in the Jovian sector. The only problem is that as soon as I make a break for Io, there's a good chance they might spot me again, and if they do, then they'll know exactly where I'm headed. But I guess I'll worry about that later. Warning. What? Oh, hello. It looks like I've got company. Attack drones, maybe? No, and second thoughts are too fast. This is a hydrogen shuttle. They'd not be able to... Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Those crazy bastards, they fired two of those Starlance missiles at me. 
Those are anti-capital ship weapons. What the hell are they playing at? Shit. I can't outrun them, but I can certainly try to outmaneuver them. At least I think I can. They're designed to take out slow-moving capital vessels, not shuttles like these. Damn. They're struggling, but they're still tracking me. Now, when used against other vessels, they're programmed to avoid hitting any planets or asteroids. Maybe I can take advantage of that. Well, here goes nothing. Haha, <laughs> yes! It just flipped and went vertical to avoid hitting the planet. And it looks like the other one's starting to slow down. Has it run out of propellant? Well, I can only hope. Yep, there it goes. Splash one missile. It's just that remaining one I have to worry about now. Let's try another high G turn. Right, now that it's gone wide, I need to try and get further inside its turning circle and drop down near the surface. That might mess up its ability to reacquire me. I hope. I'm not seeing it on the radar. Maybe it went flying off into space. That's always a possibility, but I'd rather err on the side of caution, to be honest. Yeah, I'm going to stick with my original plan and fly near the surface of the moon. At least until I'm sure the damn thing isn't coming back, and that the Nestorius is well and truly out of range. Well, I'm not seeing anything visually. So far, so good. And there's nothing on the radar either. Well, that's good enough for me. Gaining altitude and setting a course for Io. That ROS Nestorius has just appeared over the horizon now. It's not moving though, so I'm not sure if they've spotted me yet. Either way, I'm well out of range now, so there's very little they can do. Which means that it should be a relatively safe flight all the way to Io. It's going to take a while to get there, but as luck would have it, this shuttle has plenty of oxygen left. More than enough, in fact. It will be good to see the grumpy old bastard again. I just hope he's taking good care of Benson. Unfortunately, I couldn't take him with me on the corporate service, so I left my original suit's wrist computer with the marshal for safekeeping. Anyhow, if all goes well, I'll see them both soon enough. There it is, the moon of Io. The annoying thing is that the mining outpost I need to reach is on the other side of this moon. The good news, however, is that according to the nav charts, the Interstellar Minerals Corporation have an orbital trading post on this side, so I can at least use that to rest for a bit and contact the marshal to let him know I'm on my way. Thankfully, the flight over here has been extremely quiet and uneventful, so it doesn't look like I've been followed. Which seems to suggest that the ROS vessel that attacked me earlier either didn't spot me leaving Europa or it's just decided not to give chase. Either way, it looks like I'm finally safe for the time being. And if I'm not mistaken, that's the IMS station up ahead, which means I can finally take it easy. Yep, there it is. Almost there. IMS Orbital Station IO, this is ROS Transport Shuttle RTX-218, requesting docking permission, over. RTX-218, this is IMS oh, IO, shit. Oh, you son of a bitch! Damn, that was close. Well, it looks like they did know where I was going. Good grief. I need to land quickly. Results-oriented sciences and interstellar minerals have a ceasefire right now, and I don't think they'd risk breaking it. Or at least I'm hoping they won't. 
But that's a pretty big assumption, and I could be wrong, but I don't really have much choice right now. There is a Vulture-class patrol vessel guarding that station, but it's an older design, and no match at all against an Astorius class. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's moving, which means that some of its crew, if not all of them, might actually be inside that station. Regardless, I'm not going to mess around. I'm going to land this thing as quickly as possible and quickly check out what that ROS vessel is doing. There it is, an Astorius Mark II class vessel named the Kutna Hora. And from the looks of things, it's coming this way. And it's getting faster. Right, I need to get inside and warn everyone. Short ranged comms may be jammed, but I'm hoping the large antenna can burn through this and send out a call for help. Ah, oh, I need to open my visor and take off the CCA. It's soaking in sweat. I'll leave the headset on, though. Ah, that's better. Everyone, listen up. That ROS warship out there destroyed my station, and this place could be next. I'd advise any crew from that patrol vessel to head back out there and get ready. Likewise, if there's any visitors here, I strongly suggest you leave as soon as possible. Now, you wait one second. Who are you? I'll explain in a minute. Right now, we need to get a message to the Marshal on Io. He's an old friend of mine and will hopefully help us get out of this mess. The only thing is they're trying to jam us, but if your comms guy pushes the antenna power up to max, he should eventually be able to burn through it. Alright mate, you seem to know what you're talking about, so I'll trust you on this one, but you better have a good explanation for this. Don't worry Commander, I'll explain everything later on. Then again, if those bastards over there decide to open fire, there won't be a later on. Sorry, mate. The commander says that unless we end you and the stolen shuttle over in the next ten minutes, they'll open fire. Damn it. I half expected as much, and I can't risk all your lives too. That leaves me with one of two choices. Commander, we have got multiple job signatures just above the planet outside of the station. Oh, that. what now? I don't recognise the vessel, but those look almost like TCA colours. A smaller one's just jumped in too. Oh, hang on. I do recognise that small one. That's a Stingray. That's definitely a TCA vessel. And it looks like he's letting that Nestorius know he means business. You know, I don't want to jinx it, but I've got a feeling the odds are now somewhat in our favour. Aha, here comes that larger escort vessel. This is TCA Marshal Edward Gordon of the Bass Reeves to the Kutnohara. <laughs> Brilliant! This moon and the stations orbiting it all fall under my jurisdiction. Any weapons fired or attempts to board them will be considered a hostile act, and we will have no option but to use deadly force. If you do not have any official business here, then I suggest that you leave immediately. Unless you fancy being searched for contraband and illegal weaponry. The choice is yours. I hope I've made myself clear. Over. Nice one. It's the Marshal. And not a moment too soon, I might add. <laughs> and I think they got the message too. It looks like they've realised they've bitten off a little more than they can chew and are falling back. Yep, it looks like they've engaged their jump drive and are about to leave. Finally. Although I am glad that the Rossies didn't do anything stupid, otherwise that could have escalated quickly. Well, well, well. I should have known you were involved in this, Captain Robertson. Ah, Marshal Gordon! You have no idea how glad I am to see you right now. 
I wish I could say the same. It appears as though trouble follows you around like a bad smell. <laughs> now that's just the cheap soul co-op aftershave I've been forced to use this last year. Uh, they killed them, Marshal. That ship that just fled destroyed our station. I barely made it out alive. That reminds me, I've recorded everything. Permission to come aboard, Marshal. If you've got a spare cell over there, I'd be more than happy to release myself into your custody and debrief you in everything that's happened. Besides, it's been a long day and I could really do with some rest. But mission granted, Captain. But don't get too comfortable as it seems I have some bad news of my own to share with you. But that can wait until we speak in private. Of course. Thanks, Marshal. I look forward to seeing you shortly. Although from the sounds of things, I suspect that all this is only just the beginning. Yes, Captain. I'm afraid it is.